Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I'm going to be showing you some books I've hauled recently. I think I'm going to call this an April haul, um, though there may be some others. There will be some others that turn up this month. Um, but these are ones I've acquired in the last couple of months um, and some of them I just haven't got around to showing you guys. Um, so I'm going to be showing you them today. Now I just have two that are for around the world. Um, the first one of those is Roadside Dog um, by Cicelor Mislowas. And this one is a collection of prose poetry. Um, so they are like in paragraph form. Um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I don't know. I don't read an awful lot of prose poetry, so I'm looking forward to getting to this one. Um, and I just think it's a really cool little book, like the dog has. Can you see? The dog's got like maps on him. Um, there you go. The dog has maps on him and just obviously the, the style of it is quite cute. Um, it's kind of squared a bit different and they're all quite short poems. So yes, hopefully I like this one. And the next one is my pick for the Philippines and that is Dog Eaters by Jessica Haydorn. We have a friend. Um, this one is a book that seems to kind of like span lots of different characters. Um, they follow one schoolgirl called Rio um, and it talks a lot about how um, Filipino culture and American culture kind of link to one another and how um, like pop culture feeds in um, to other cultures, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it should be interesting. It's a really odd cover. I don't know if you can quite see how weird it is um but yeah apparently this one is really good it had some really good reviews and i had just wanted to read a different from the philippines um but this one popped up and i recommended and sort of looked fun so we'll see and then i have a few that i was given for review um and these are actually given to me by wordery um who are like an online bookstore i buy a lot of my books through wordery um so when they offered to send me some stuff i was like yeah because actually i really like you guys um and i use them for a lot of a lot of the book buying i do um online um, and they sent me this little package for International Women's Day. Now it's a little bit after that, I just did an Instagram post for it, but I thought I'd show you what they sent me anyway. Um, so they sent me this one, which is The Little Book of Feminism by Harriet Dyer. Uh, I'm actually going to do a giveaway for this one um, because I have quite a lot of books around feminism and I feel as though I know lots of the things that are in here, I've had to flip through. Um, but if you do want to um, sort of enter in to win this one, then just leave a comment down below. Um, I'll do it internationally, screw it, I'll do it internationally, it's going to be a little book. Um, so leave a comment down below and I will pick one out at random um, if you want this little one. It's just like a kind of guide to feminism and the landmarks um, in the time. Um, a little bit about what, how we define it now and, and all of those kind of good things. Um, so if you're new to the topic, feel free, I will, I will pass it on your way. And the next one I have, I think it's part of the Vintage Minis. Um, and this one is Liberty by Virginia Woolf. Um, I've read Virginia Woolf's novels but not her non-fiction and I believe this, these are essays um, around, you know, constraints on women. Um, yeah, these are really pretty books and I haven't bought any myself just because they are on kind of big topics and it's not kind of in what I've been reading lately. Um, but I will definitely have a read of her essays at some stage. Um, and just to see what I think of her, to be honest, because I think her and I deviate somewhat in... Um, her fiction writing. I, I'm not a huge Virginia Woolf fan but I can kind of see the merit of the way she writes even if it doesn't personally resonate with me so essays are normally a good way of telling a person for me um, so yeah we'll see what I think to her um, sort of essay writing and yeah it's a really beautiful book I think it's a really nicely put together. And then the last one I have is one that I was just like it's very me um, and it is The Little People Big Dreams Mary Curie um, I don't know how many of these there are, but they are sort of picture books that focus on one particular woman. Um, just look at it, it's so pretty. Um, so yeah, this is about Marie Curie. Um, obviously I'm a bit of a, a geeky, or I was a very geeky person, um, physics child. So yeah, I'm going to be um, diving into this one soon. I just haven't had a chance to get to it yet. I've been away from home a lot recently, um, but I think this is one I'm just going to sit down with a cup of tea and it, the, the illustrations are beautiful. So okay. And the next ones are ones I bought myself, um, and these are lots of ladies that I wanted to welcome into my life. Um, because when I read my random stuff for my around the world break, I was reading lots of men, and I, I like reading men. I do, you, you guys know, I probably read like 60% men. Um, I just, I had a real craving just to be more women. Um, so there's some women in here, they've got one man I will um, show you first. Um, but yes, I, I'm really excited to read a bit more women's, women's fiction, fiction by women. Um, in between my around the world stuff and obviously lots of my around the world is women as well. So the first one that I have is Hired, Six Months Undercover in Low Wage Britain by James Bloodworth. Oh, look at this cover. 
So basically, James Bloodworth decided to go around for six months living and working in like the worst jobs that there are and talking to people who do those jobs um, and wrote this book about that experience. Um, this is interesting to me because it obviously deals with class and inequality and um, social barriers and all those sorts of things but also because I work with NHR so labour and the labour market and how people are treated at work is also really close to my heart. Um, yeah, I've heard quite good things about this one so far, so I'm excited. Um, and I think this is one I may read in my lunch breaks. Um, I quite like reading stuff to do with my job-ish when I'm in my lunch breaks. So um, I work in NHS, so sometimes I read my medical non-fiction at work, um, or I quite like reading um, stuff from performance, etc. Just because it keeps my mind occupied and I can kind of bring it into my work. Um, but I'm also having my own time. Um, so that's my plan with this one. And then we've got my ladies, we've got my ladies. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Uh, so the first one is one that was um, shortlist, longlisted for the Man Booker International, and that is The Dinner Guest um, by Gabriella Ibarra. Um, I don't know what country this is from. Spain. Um, so I think it's in translation. My goodness, so many questions. So many questions, Sophie. I ought to have flipped through beforehand. Um, if it is translated, they haven't been very good at telling us who by. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this one um, is a book around a family um, and it says that a story goes round that in my family there's an extra dinner guest at every meal. He's invisible but always there. He has a plate, glass, knife and fork. Every so often he appears, casts his shadow over the table and erases one of those present. The first to vanish was my grandfather. It I'm, I'm in, I'm sold, it's a really pretty book um, and I get to read some Booker Internationals which is exciting, I'm not doing the whole lot, I'm just picking the ones that I'm interested in um, but the Booker International has quite a lot to do with why I wanted to do around the world and what prompted me to read more translated fiction um, so yes, I'm really looking forward to this one and I'm probably going to pick it up when I finish my next read and the next one I have is another one from the Booker International long list and that is Die My Love um, by Ariana Hardwitz this is Argentina, and I don't think I've read Argentina yet, so if I read this, this may become my pick for Argentina. Um, so yes, this is a book about a woman who is living, I think, with her family in an isolated part of the French countryside, um, and she's battling with all of these demons, um, and also kind of struggling with like the weight of motherhood and womanliness, um, and basically she starts to kind of crack a little bit. Um, so that sounds right up my street. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what I think of this cover. What do you guys think of this cover? I feel like I'd like it in context, but on its own, it just makes me a little bit on edge. Maybe that's the idea. Um, but yes, this one was translated by Sarah Moses and Carolina Orford. I don't think I've ever seen a book that was translated by two people before, so that's quite interesting. Um, but yes, I'm hoping I like this one. Um, the author of Fever Dream um, really liked this one, so that bodes well for me. Moving away from the Man Booker International, the next one I picked up was The Fifth Child by Doris Lessing. Um, I tried to read The Golden Notebooks by her when I was like 16 and I just didn't get it. Um, but I really want to give her another try because I feel like I probably missed something. Um, so this is a book around a couple who've had four children and living this broadly kind of quite ideal life um, and the woman becomes pregnant with the fifth child. But when the child is born, um, the boy um, is violent and um, like acts out and they can't really communicate with him and there's something happening and something wrong with this child um, and they kind of begin to wonder sort of what's happened to make him like this um, and yeah she the woman starts to kind of doubt herself um, in if, she, if she's a really good person if she can bring this kind of person into the world um, so I'm, I'm wanting to read more of her and I think this cover design is really striking to me I really like it so yeah I'm hoping I like Doris Lessing. I feel like I probably will. It, it's the kind of thing that when I read it, I maybe knew it was a bit too soon. Um, we'll see. Let me know. What do you guys think of her? Do you, do you enjoy her work? And the next one I have is a republished um, one from Deborah Levy. It is The Unloved. Um, this one was one she wrote in 1994 and it's been brought back out to uh, appeal to everyone who's read Swimming Home, I think. Um, it describes a bunch of hedonistic tourists gathering together to celebrate Christmas in remote France. We've got two remote France books, remote, remote French settings here, um, where an English woman is murdered whilst there. Um, one child who is considers herself the unloved child says she knows who's done it um, and the investigation then takes place but it's exploring quite big themes within that investigation. Um, yeah, literary murder mystery type thing. 
lots of I'm, I'm liking there's a, a theme of a creepy child going on because the next one is we need to talk about Kevin by then or Shiver um I don't know I think I just picked one of them up and was like yeah you just just pile me up with your terrifying children um seen the film, never read the book, um, Lionel Shriver I've only ever read Big Brother and I really wanted to read more of her, I've avoided it because this one's so big, um, but I want to read it and I think actually it's probably going to be quite a quick read um, because Big Brother was, um, which is the only one of hers I've read, um, just because she writes in such a compelling fashion, um, it's obviously fairly topical, um, If you, I don't want to spoil anything so I won't say any more than that, but it's a fairly topical book at the minute. Um, and again, that sort of fear of who your children are, how can you ever know who they are, and um, how much impact do you have in your child life as a mother. Um, so yeah, really, really hoping I get on with this one. And one final bit from another final lady. Um, I've been eyeing this one off on social media, like, since January, I would say, and had just been really sad I wasn't going to get to read it, and I wanted it in the hardcover, and time was running out. And I looked at it last time I went in as well. And enough excuses, I just wanted the book. Um, but it is Feel Free by Zadie Smith. Um, these are a collection of essays by Zadie Smith, who's a fantastic writer. She really is. I think she grows on you. She's definitely grown on me. Um, and they're just around Englishness and a variety of topics, racism, Brexit, um, writing, all sorts, you know, the, you know, the general just essays. Um, yeah, and I just seen so many people reading it and loving it and I really felt like I was missing out. It's her writing is so British. Like of all of the authors I can think of, hers is probably one of the like most genuinely British feeling things that I've read um, from like contemporary fiction. So yes, I'm really looking forward to reading this. Just I I just feel like I was I just needed some women in my life. I needed some women writers in my life. I feel like I've got them. It's making me really happy. Um, I'm currently finishing um, a True Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, and then. I'm going to jump into at least one of these and just have fun with it. Um, the TBR is still happening, don't panic yourselves, um, but I just kind of feel like grabbing something new um, and I'm going to let myself because that feels really exciting. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed hearing me ramble about a few books I've picked up uh, lately. As I say, there are more on their way. Um, it might be another April part two maybe. We'll see um, either that or I will wrap things up again in May. May. It's only March now so that feels a rather long way away but I will I will see you guys soon anyway and look after yourselves until I see you again. Bye. Bye.